And so people are like, you know, Sagar, Crystal, like what you guys are saying would be valid, but Ukraine is winning. Look, we are barely a year into this. One year into the First World War, I could make the easy case that Germany was going to win the First World War. Second World War, I could easily make the case the Nazis were going to win. If I go back to World War, uh, Civil War, I could easily make a case the Confederates were going to win. All three of those, it didn't happen. Why? Because these things go on for a long time. Like You have no idea what it is. And one of the reasons that many of those conflicts, first and two, went on and uh, ultimately came to the conclusion they were was because a lot, millions of lives were lost. And the whole point from those conflicts, if you look at the way that people talked, was we have to learn the lesson. We have to learn the lesson, but it's been 75 years, and now this is all a game. This is a tweet that people are saying about Ukraine, but it says real-world yeah, consequences for people. That's it. That's yeah. it, exactly. And the, the total lack of an ability to have a reasoned debate without just being, like, smeared as a propagandist. Yes. Is, uh, it, Again, it is a don't read the comments. It is a, ter <laughs> it is a terrifying moment. Um, and... You know, there's a, a couple things that do uh, give me some heart, which is number one, even though like I can't really blame the people who are just who can't understand seeing it another way because the propaganda that is coming from every network really like almost across the board is very strong and it's very hard to avoid that. So I have sympathy for that perspective. But even so. A poll just came out that had from NBC News. They buried this at the very end of their write up of the poll. Public's now 50 50 split on continuing aid to Ukraine. So people are questioning, even though they're being fed so much propaganda, I think that is a credit to the rise of independent media. I yes. think it's also a credit to the fact that they don't fucking trust the mainstream press anymore. Both things. But because yeah. of independent media, the trust is informed, or the lack of trust, rather, right. is informed. Right. It's, it's not just knee-jerk. I hope. I mean, that's my no, hope looking at right. those numbers. Yeah. I think your hope is 100% correct. I think you're right. I think you guys are very important. Glenn Greenwald, very important. Jimmy Dore, very important. Kyle Kalinske, very important. People who are real people that, that actually have done the homework and are going over the details and can inform people because there's so many people out there you, like I talked to Dave Smith about the history mm -hmm. of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine I was like what and he informed me about the coup in 2014 I'm like oh lot. my god there's a lot of backstory and well, then we played the video on <laughs> the Colbert show the oh, old right. Colbert show yeah. Which is just fucking it's like Gideon something, the guy from the Times, where he was like, well, he's got a it? book. He's selling a book. Yeah, and right. in the book, he's comparing Russia and Ukraine to Batman and Robin. And he's like, Ukraine is Robin, and we want to take Robin and bring him over to our side. And it's like this open secret. They're just that they're openly doing talking. This. You know, it's just, there, there were um, cables from that actually WikiLeaks released. And uh, a friend who's a, a great journalist, Bronco Marsatich, who's been looking at the Ukraine conflict with a, a critical eye, um, he sorted through these cables and he found all of these diplomatic cables from the prior era where you had um, NATO allies, you had U.S. officials who were all saying, hey, guys, Russia has red lines here with regard to Ukraine. And floating NATO membership with Ukraine is a real violation of their hard red lines. And we're very fearful. And they laid out exactly the trajectory that we could find ourselves on. Now, that doesn't deny Russia agency or, you know, Putin and the Kremlin agency for invading. No one made them do that. However, it is to say that, you know, there was a time when you were allowed to acknowledge that U.S. policy could lead to this exact event. And now when you even suggest that us, you know, floating NATO membership with Ukraine and saying that they were going to be made apart, that some of these things were exacerbating and they crossed the red line and, you know, created a situation that was incredibly tense where this is the predictable outcome. Again, that's you're not allowed to talk about that. now. Well, it's it's also like to bring back the chest analogy is if you looked at war and you 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 ignored the human casualties and the horrors and the fact that it should absolutely be avoided at all costs and all human deaths are valuable and bombing apartment buildings and all the horrible shit. It's terrible and evil. But this isn't like that we are being fed a narrative that Russia made a big move and there was no other moves. Right. And when we find out about the moving of weapons closer to Russia, the discussion of them joining NATO, and you realize Russia is getting moved on. There's moves. Now, you, you absolutely be correct in saying the, the correct response is not blowing up apartment buildings and starting a war and invading a country. You're right. 
But this is not an unprovoked situation. It didn't and just we, come out of nowhere from yeah, a madman. Yeah. We're, we're yes. not getting this narrative on television. The, this is a new time. And the only way to get this discussion is you guys. It's people like you. And that's what's so fucking important about today. And that's what's so dangerous about censorship. And that's what's so dangerous about these partisan ideas where you're willing to, like, you're willing to absolutely ignore good points that the other side says because then you would give them some sort of credit in winning this ideological bullshit game we're all playing. That is so it well It drives said. me nuts, <laughs> especially on corruption. You know, you were talking about censorship, but corruption is a great one where everybody wants to talk about Hunter Biden on the right. I would love, listen, we can talk about Hunter Biden all day. We've been covering we it covered since Biden day one. He's a like, guy who got hooked on drugs. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and likes to get his duck, dick right. sucked. Yeah. And who <laughs> doesn't? Lot. Right. What, that's not what the problem is. Yeah. You know, there's it's it's just revealing a very corrupt system that everyone wants wants to ignore exactly yeah. and then we, we were like a... hey let's talk about jared kushner and then a lot of yeah. people on the writers i'm like hey uh you know this guy it's actually great they're internal saudi documents where he asked the saudi uh, royal kingdom fund or whatever for a billion dollar investment in, in in his new fund private equity fund right after he leaves the white house the internal emails are like i don't think this guy's a very good investor i'm not sure this would be a good use of our capital and mbs the crown prince is like give him the money they're like it's they're like he intervenes send him the billion personally yeah. To Just get to Jared get this guy his two billion, billion two, I think it was two. Maybe two billion. Two you're billion right. for his fund. Yeah. That's and, a baller but, friend to have. Yeah. yeah, but if you're on the right, eh, let's not talk about yeah, that. Right. Let's talk about Hunter Biden and his laptop. And of course, the Democrats. We had um, Ted Lieu, congressman, yes. on. That, yeah. This is back in the old days at the Hill at Rising, but I'll never forget. We were pressing him on Hunter Biden and these boards that he was on and the money he was getting whenever he's like, people sit on boards and they get paid money. Like it was Jesus so part Christ. of the Washington, like the water that they swim yeah. in. He couldn't even conceive that it was a problem. I mean, now it may not be illegal, but that's an issue in and of itself. The fact that he could just hand wave away. Well, that it's semi legal. The... Yeah, oh, no, it's just straight legal. Yeah, it, that's but the, I mean, that's the crazy yeah. part. It's, it's sketchy. It's legal, but it's yeah. sketchy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 